Hello guys, this is Vaish. So this is day 7 of the daily quiz series. So till November we have done. Today we will do December 2021 current affair. So daily 50 MCQs. So total 1250 MCQs you will get and this will go till your prelims date. And these are taken from your our paid courses only. So this if you see different packs are there and pack 13, 12 test of current affair. This is what we are doing now. Okay. So from every test which has 100 MCQ, I am showing only 25, 25 MCQs. So remaining who are very serious about this exam, they can buy this pack and get the full PDF. Okay. So this is a, a free initiative on YouTube to show the standard of these uh, test uh, questions and why every year questions are directly coming from our uh, uh, test series. So for free uh, three sample test, you can email it to at gmail.com and then we'll give you three full test sample. Okay. If you are new to this channel, please hit subscribe so that we can keep this free content alive. First question for today. Project Rehab recently launched in Assam relates to what? So this kind of uh, questions comes in UPSC when uh, some initiative is started and it has a unique name or some mnemonic, something will be there. So you have to know that. Okay, so refugees, rape victims, honeybees, red panda. Project Rehab recently launched in Assam relates to So your answer is honeybee. It's actually honeybee and elephants. You can tell this is a uh, reducing elephant human attacks using bees. Okay. So if you see here the something called uh, bee fences are created, the honeybees in the fences will make the elephant attacks in human habitation to reduce. Okay. They will stop the uh, elephants entering to the human habitations because in the like in fence format, this uh, thing will be there and it's a highly cost effective thing also compared to other uh, complicated measures. Okay, it increases the honey production also and increases the farmer's income. Meaning you are just placing bees in, as a fence in the uh, area around the human habitation. So the elephants will not come in and they will be going away and so attacks will be reducing. So because a lot of uh, human animal, uh, human elephant uh, conflicts has been reported in the last many years in Assam and many other states also. So this is a very good cost effective measure and it is implemented by this Khadi and Village Industry Commission which is uh, details are given here statutory body 1956 and all and it is a submission to the national honey mission of KYIC so KVIC so KVIC has a mission called national honey mission so this one project rehab is a submission okay and it is in line with the sweet revolution which is in, uh, uh, launched in 2017 for this honey related thing so this project if you see was first launched in Karnataka and on huge success has been extended to many other states and uh, the statistics of how many uh, elephant uh, human conflicts that is also mentioned here okay second question exercise equivalent is a joint military exercise between armies of india and which country seychelles mauritius maldives myanmar so with all these countries india will be having already existing many exercises that names also you have to study make a table format Vaishaya students will get a revision chart which has in the table format already. So you others who are not studying from Vaishaya's make your own notes or table. So it is Maldives. Okay. So same like that with uh, Seychelles. What is the exercise? Go and try to find out. With Mauritius, do we have any named exercise? Go and find out. Myanmar, we have multiple exercise, uh, bilateral, trilateral, everything is there. Try to find out. So here the basic details are there. Okay. It's in their language. The covering means friends in uh, their uh, uh, language. Okay. So it's an Indo-Aryan language spoken in India, Lakshadweep and Maldives, exercise conducted between uh, these countries between uh, since 2008. In 2019, it was in uh, Maharashtra. 2018, it was in Maldives. So basic uh, information. Okay, this time it was in Maldives. And here some more information is given. Okay, see here itself the answer is there. This, this is the military exercise between India and Seychelles. And these are the exercises between India and Myanmar. And with Mauritius, we, do, we don't have a named exercise as of now. Which of the following are true about International Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance, that is IDEA. It is an intergovernmental organization based in Australia. India was one among the founding members of this thing. So, two statement type question. If you don't know, you should ideally skip it. Okay, because it's difficult to apply any elimination techniques. So, it is an intergovernmental organization but based in Stockholm, uh, Sweden, not in Australia. And India was uh, one of the founding members. Okay, currently it has around 34 member countries, uh, larger, smaller, newer, older, all types of democracies are there and is assisted by a 15 member board of advisor. Okay, with lot of uh, experts and personalities from various backgrounds. So now what happened is an Indian election commissioner, former election commissioner has joined this board of this idea. Okay, that is why it is in news. Which of the following are true about 
Pradhanmantri Awas Yojana Gramin. Okay, meaning the rural one. The houses allotted in the name of woman or jointly between husband and wife. Okay, the houses in this Awas Yojana is allotted in the name of woman or jointly between husband and wife. Second one, the funds for the scheme are allocated to the states on the basis of 75 percentage weightage of rural housing shortage while 25 percentage weightage of poverty ratio. Okay, so there will be a, a, a method in which these houses are allotted. So whether this is the weightage or the ratio. The scheme achieved its uh, target in 2022 way before the planned deadline of 2025. So these are the statements. So here every statement you have to know elimination won't work. Even if uh, three you eliminate then still you are left with one and two. If two you eliminate still you are left with this thing. Only if one you can eliminate then still there is a chance that it will be none of these. Else you cannot uh, do elimination here. You have to know the statements. So like this, uh, schemes related questions will be there in current affair if it is something new. Other schemes will be there in a spe scheme specific test series. Okay. So that also packs are there. You can go and check the pack again, which pack is suitable for you. So here it is one, two only. It did not achieve its uh, target. It's in fact extended. Okay. That is a news. It's extended till March 2024 and remaining everything. Okay. The full history of this uh, housing programs. Okay. First it was Indira Awas Yojana. Then uh, it was uh, in 1985, it was launched. Uh, Ministry of Rural Development used to take care and uh, this much this much assistance was there so that numbers are not important so it evolved in a very uh, strong way and now it is uh, in by 2024 hopefully they will achieve so here the numbers are there like how many we achieved and how many is left to be achieved okay so crores of houses are being built across india so that's a good thing everybody will have a, a proper house in both uh, urban and rural areas which of the following are true about global pension index report it is released by the economist India is placed among top 10 ranks for its efficient pension system. India placed, sorry, index placed India in the same category of Japan, South Korea and few other countries. So again, a three statement type question. So if you can take an intelligent guess, you can get the answer. So here the answer is three only. It is not released by the economist, it is released by this uh, Mercer group, which is a management consulting firm in Melbourne, Australia. India is in, uh, if you see the position, 40th place out of 43 countries. So the top 10 and all is wrong. But the last one is correct. India is placed in the same category of Japan, South Korea and few other countries. So here uh, India is in the bottom. So our minister has told like uh, their uh, data used and everything is not reliable because India cannot be such low in this kind of things because we have a uh, not so efficient but a very uh, like uh, average and above uh, system kind of thing we have okay which are the following are true about international solar alliance it is an alliance of more than 100 countries it is a treaty based intergovernmental organization countries that do not fall within the tropics can also join the alliance and avail all benefits as other members including the voting rights so again about this group okay so for groups also international bodies we have four separate test 400 mcqs so if you are uh, thinking or if you know actually when you go to the previous questions you will see that every year one or two bodies related question is there okay so if you know the paper you will know that that test series is important and you have to come and get it okay so here one two three two two three one two three only so this uh, is actually an easy question because of the way options are set Everywhere 3 is there, you eliminate 3 and you will get the answer 1, 2 only because uh, everything is not uh, possible. You, even the countries outside the tropics can join, but they won't get the voting rights in this alliance. Okay, so that alone, if you knew, you could have got the answer. Remaining 1 and 2 is very basic, like alliance of more than 100 countries and treaty based uh, this thing. 1 and 2 is uh, true. So now UNGA grants observer status to this uh, alliance. Okay, so this is uh, considered as a body which has an observer status in the uh, UNGA. Okay, so it's a historic decision because India and uh, uh, France started this initiative and now globally it is being accepted everywhere. So it's a very good thing. The full details is here. You can uh, pause and read this. Question number seven, which of the following are true about seditions law, sedition laws in India? Laws were first drafted by Lord Lytton in 1870s. Sedition is a non-bailable offense. Both jail term and fines may be added as punishment. A person charged with sedition law is barred from government job and may also have to live without a passport. Well, sedition is always in the news since uh, last uh, four or five years. So there is a high chance that uh, the history part of it, okay, the static part of it can be asked. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4, 2 and 2, 3, 4 only. So if you see 2, 3, 4, everything is true. 
but it is not drafted by Lord Lytton, that too not in 1870s, it is much before that in 1837 by Macaulay, okay, Lord Macaulay who is in, uh, involved in that education related things also, Macaulay's minute, minute which we call, in Spectrum textbook, in Polity textbook it will be there. So, section 124A of the Indian Penal Code deals with this uh, sedition law, okay. So, if you see again, some more details are there, whatever is mentioned, this uh, statement 234, that is all mentioned here and some more extra information is there, okay. So, sedition is a very important topic for prelims and means, so you have to know these basic informations. Now, one country's uh, shadow government has allowed the use of world's largest cryptocurrency called Tether. So, this Tether crypto cryptocurrency will be used as an official currency now. So, here which country are we referring to? Ukraine, Myanmar, Venezuela, Brazil. Cryptocurrency is also in the news. India is also moving towards a digital currency format which will come soon. So, you have to know the things going around the world related to cryptocurrency. So, answers Myanmar, there you know the military has taken over and they are uh, making uh, drastic, drastic reforms each and every time. So, here uh, this Tether cryptocurrency will be used as an official currency now and uh, this will make easier for them to raise fund and make payments and uh, it's written here about their uh, blockchain technology and all so these are static parts about tether which may not be very important for you in your prelims but i'm just giving you so that in future it will be uh, useful for you okay and it's also a stable uh, coin since it was originally designed to always be worth this much okay so it's a little more stable compared to other cryptocurrencies like bitcoin that is why it is a uh, little uh, pop popular or you should know why it is uh, there mentioned along with bitcoin Question number 9, which of the following are true about Jabahar port? It serves as the only oceanic port of Iran. India and Iran had first agreed on plans to develop ports there in 2015. Recently, India, Iran and Russia held talks on joint use of the Jabahar port. So, we see first one is a static statement. Second is a static plus current affair thing. Third is a current affair thing. So, this is how UPSC also will frame questions. You cannot go only by studying current affair. You cannot go only by studying static. Both you have to know in equal portions. So, current affair, if you know, this is a very easy question. Because Chabahar port talks, you should know who actually we are talking. It is not uh, India, Iran and uh, uh, Russia. It is India, Iran and Uzbekistan who are in talks. So, that alone, if you knew, you could eliminate statement 3 from everywhere and get the answer as uh, one only okay and talks it's not like uh, 2015 or uh, it, it's not like uh, that much uh, recent here it will be mentioned oceanic port and in uh, 2003 onwards they are all were talking about it india and uh, iran so it's not a new thing which modi government started it's a older thing only thing is implementation happened now okay so the, some names which you see here okay what are the internal ports there what is the distance from pakistan and the iranian revolution which happened iraq war which happened all these basic informations are here and 2003 we agreed on this 2016 we had the bilateral agreement and india's first shipment of wheat to afghanistan was sent in october 2017 through this port 2018 india took over the operation so this is the overall evolution and this is the only information you need you don't have to study more than this okay so these talks are going on and that is why it is in news in the uh, month of December 2021. Question number 10. Durga Puja is an annual Hindu festival celebrated in India as well as Bangladesh. It is a part of UNESCO list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Okay, so this also UPSC multiple times have asked because there are only uh, 10 to 15 items which are mentioned in intangible cultural heritage of humanity from India. So you should ideally by heart all of them. Okay, so again Vaishya students will get a revision uh, table where I will tell with the year in which it uh, uh, got the recognition. So, whether Durga Puja is mentioned in that or not. So, this if you see, both of them, neither one nor two are false. Okay, that means both of them are true. Okay, the question is asking for false, that is why neither one nor two. So, if you see in uh, uh, India and Bangladesh, in India in multiple states also it is there, it is a 10 day festival and uh, here if you see, it has been recently added to the UNESCO intangible cultural list. That is why it is being asked. Okay. So, intangible list, the things which are there from India. This is the list. So, first is like from Kerala in 2001. Okay. 2008. Okay. This is the year. 2008, it got the recognition. 
and if you see multiple things are there from multiple states and UPS have already asked multiple times 2017 was the last current affair when Kumbh Mela was added before that yoga was added and now if you see Durga Puja is added okay in 2021 so this is the latest this is a Wikipedia screenshot same like this a revision table also will be given to you with uh, some more detailing okay in the state wise or something else sort it and give you so if you see in Kerala two three items will be there so like that you UPS can ask that also like which state has the maximum number of things uh, in the this thing okay in the UNESCO list question number 11 this Manohari gold and golden butterfly seen in news refers to coffee varieties of Karnataka, rice variants of West Bengal, tea varieties of Assam, wheat variants of Punjab. This again you have to know in news either when a product gets GI tag or some unique reason it is in news. So it is uh, tea varieties of Assam, some uh, auction happened and uh, about uh, 1 uh, lakh rupees per, one, uh, per kg for that variety was uh, traded by people. So that's why it was a like a record kind of auction and that is why it was in uh, discussion and it was in the news okay so assam's uh, tea varieties different different information what you need is mentioned here more than this please don't uh, waste your time on this okay even if your geography optional or whatever i don't think more than this you need okay so if you are new to this channel as i told and if you are lacking foundation or if you are going on failing prelims year after year that means you are not studying the right way no matter you took one year coaching or you studied already many things please don't avoid our foundational videos once you watch that you will realize okay simply go and read the comments under those videos you will understand that you are actually missing something which you have been missing all these years okay please watch our foundational video for that whatsapp us i'll give you it free and then you will understand what to or how to study this is the english playlist this is the hindi playlist and both of them have at least 15 to 20 videos and that will be sufficient for you to sit and study from home by yourself okay only test series you will need to get that also we are providing at an affordable cost you can get that okay all the subjects there are playlist and based on your comments okay when you comment under each this thing like okay i saw it thank you please upload the next one something like that when you comment then only i will upload the next one okay else we will give it as a paid course these are thumbnails of different different playlist you can pause and see People who are already there in our channel will be knowing all this and start watching the previous year videos also 2016 to 20 every question with detailed elimination techniques I have explained already free of cost again it is there on our YouTube simply search YCIS 2016 paper YCIS 2018 paper you will get that videos okay and CSAT also one playlist is there where we discussed mathematical questions more will come when the prelims date is nearing. Question number 12 Jaya Jaitley task, task Force seen in news relates to raising marriage age of women from 18 to 21 voting for elections to be made a fundamental duty, national education policy, 50% seats of the medical colleges to be made government seats. So all these four are in the news, were in the news, in Hindu editorials also detailed articles were there. So now this Jaya Jaitley task force is related to which one, only those people will know who read every day's newspaper. Okay, others who studied something, something from here and there will think like, okay, all these four I have studied somewhere in maybe that magazine, this magazine, but exactly I don't, I am not able to connect. That is because your studies were not in a proper disciplined fashion. So here the answer is raising marriage age of women from 18 to 21. So in June 2020, this was constituted and that discussion is going on whether a girl's age should be also 21 like boys. And so what will happen? What are the opinions? What are the objections? All these things are there. Okay. So experts are telling it will not work because of certain reasons. So that all you can uh, pause and see because this is a mains topic. Okay. In mains, if they ask like this is... Uh, sufficient uh, necessary or not just if I elucidate then this kind of information you need okay so that's why I'm telling our magazine will help you in both uh, prelims and uh, mains question number 13 Rani Abaka Chauta was a 16th century queen hailing from central Madhya Pradesh coastal Karnataka western Rajasthan or Jammu and Kashmir so this also personalities in news okay every personality you cannot go and study only the ones in spectrum and the few uh, which is there in repeated previous year questions you study but remaining are taken from current affair okay upsc is like uh, very uh, 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 what is it, consistent in that every year they picks up at least one personality which is in news and they form a static question out of that person so please uh, study it okay so this if you see first uh, tuluva queen of ullal from coastal karnataka so there is this uh, chauta dynasty and some basic details about that dynasty and what all she achieved her bravery events and all these things are mentioned here okay so now some the committee has uh, is to present an award in her name and that is why it is in news like this last two three uh, days episodes also i showed you some people from karnataka were in news okay kanakadas jayanti and like there are many people were there in news because in their name either award or jayanti is being uh, conducted so which among, the, which among the following is not one of the four warships planned under project 15b so there is a project called project 15b where you are designing ships and all in that four of them are there here three of them are correct one is wrong so which is that wrong one 
మర్మగావో ఇంఫాల్ కొచ్చిన్ సూరత్ సో కొచ్చిన్ ఇస్ రాంగ్ యాక్చువల్లీ ఇట్ ఇస్ విశాఖపట్నం ఐఎన్ఎస్ విశాఖపట్నం ఐఎన్ఎస్ మర్మగావో ఐఎన్ఎస్ ఇంఫాల్ ఐఎన్ఎస్ సూరత్ ఓకే so these are the four uh, ships warships being uh, designed under this uh, project 15b so basic information of when these four okay if you see the trials of uh, this thing has happened now recently the uh, marmagao one if you see harbel trial was conducted recently that is why the news item also if you see here indian navy is uh, testing okay in the arabian sea and so uh, in the liberation day of goa from portuguese rule that day it was conducted okay marmagao means in the goa okay in the place so these uh, Uh, things current affair you should know which one was the first one which one was the last one so basic information more than that don't do much research question number 15 an experiment called micro age was seen in news related to ancient civilization and eating habits food processing and 3d printing microorganism and disease spread human cells and aging so again upsc is favorite type of uh, question where one term from the news they'll pick up and ask like what is it related to they will not ask you any detailing they'll just ask you what is it related to okay so much research which you do internally on that topic deep uh, by reading lot of things is unnecessary they will only ask what it is related to so it is actually human cells and aging okay so this is an experiment on the international space station you know which is there in a space which is uh, launched by multiple countries so there uh, they are uh, sending this uh, human cells and checking like how long it can survive and if it's modifying after these many days so that kind of research they are checking human age and the uh, cells if you see human cells and aging what will be the reactions to the cells when it is staying in there so based on that you can understand like what all effects on humans also it can happen so that uh, uh, in that uh, environment they are trying to find out what is the impact on aging phenomenon in space question number 16 which are the following are true about james webb space telescope mission it was jointly developed by nasa canadian space agency and the european space agency it is planned to succeed the hubble space telescope the primary mirror segment is made up of gold plated beryllium so it is purely static but why i have asked this because this is very much important okay james webb telescope is in new since last 4 5 years every year in current affair i teach this and uh, finally now what has happened is it is finally launched okay so when it is launched obviously there's a high chance that upsc can ask a question i think uh, even a detailed mains question can come okay because once uh, upsc have asked in even gs1 paper gs1 is nothing to do with science and technology still upsc asked in uh, 2018 mains i think like explain the uh, objectives of juno mission of nasa okay meaning don't think only isro missions you have to study they will ask even the detailed objectives or features of nasa missions also if it is so much big okay so here again this is a very important event so in a main in the mains i am expecting a very detailed question on this okay so please do all the research needed and here also all the statements have given correct only because this is to teach you about this okay so everything is mentioned here it's been work for decades as i told and multiple times it is in news nasa canadian space agency and europe is together doing it and it is uh, succeeding the hubble space telescope which did lot of uh, discoveries for astronomy uh, field and now this also will do like the same thing because it is much more bigger and efficient this much uh, mirror segments are there made of gold plated beryllium and in the field of many fields it is going to be useful you can find out lot of distant planets exoplanets and all these things and uh, it is like how it will be lifted that uh, space mission is also mentioned here the weight is mentioned here payload is mentioned here and the launch is one of the contributions of european space agency okay so it is launching here on the ariane 5 rocket operated by ariane space question 17 renuka dam project has been conceived on the giri river which is a tributary of okay so this project and river this kind of massive following questions also used to come in the uh, like 10 years back in upsc so we also give a lot of uh, table format we'll give you my students will get a lot of uh, uh, dams versus rivers kind of table so this one is in news so you have to know it giri river is a tributary of we can directly ask like that also giri river is a tributary of what but then it will look like an ssc question okay upsc will ask a project related current affair related question so it is yamuna okay so prime minister has laid the foundation of this renukaji dam product uh, project in himachal pradesh then basic details are given here how much uh, electricity how much drinking water all these facilities are mentioned here okay so it is in himachal pradesh it is a tributary of yamuna so giri and yamuna you should never forget now world economic league table is related to so this is again one sure shot question to come in exam 
one report which you have not heard which is not like every year it is not coming or maybe uh, india has no role to do it but still they will ask one report okay like justice league report and something was asked recently and that time uh, uh, you, uh, students were confused like we studied these many reports and still they are asking something out of context these questions are asked so that the intelligent students know that this we have to skip it okay when you don't know when you have not studied it is not very popular you have to skip it okay but most of the students out of their uh, curiousness or whatever or to prove themselves right like i did this much hard work i should not skip it you just your ego problem makes you so, uh, try to attempt this and you get minus 0.66 and because of that maybe your name will be out of the list so when you see such things which you have never heard okay if you have heard it good okay but if you have never heard just skip it very few people will attempt such questions so don't do it it's okay if you don't do it so here it is center for economics and business research okay so here this one about indian economy they have uh, published in this okay world economic uh, league table so what is it mentioned like india will regain the sixth position from france in 2022 and become the third largest economy by 2031 so good good things about india they have mentioned the future of india the other countries okay other than the p5 countries which we tell the india germany japan france uh, these france is already p5 so these other countries will be performing better now indonesia is also uh, there so these other countries developing countries are going to be in the top 5 or top uh, uh, six countries as the best economies in the future days okay after the covid this is what is going to happen now which are the following are true about flex fuel vehicles they are also called as dual fuel vehicles then in this two fuels are stored in separate tanks and engine runs on one fuel at a time so basic definition you know now we are moving away from this uh, petrol engine diesel engine charging stations electric charging stations are coming hydrogen vehicles are coming in public transport and private so all these things are the future okay in many years time now you will stop seeing all these petrol and uh, diesel and this bs6 standards everything will go away so you have to know different different types of engines and different different uh, things in transport which is evolving okay so here both looks true and you will tell both one and two but there is a small problem here the second one is actually defining not flex fuel vehicles it is defining bi fuel vehicles okay bi fuel vehicle is the one wherein two fuels are stored in separate tank and engine runs on one fuel at a time meaning you have two separate tank kind of thing okay but flex fuel or dual fuel means this is where comprising of an internal combustion engine that run on more than one fuel the engine usually run on gasoline blended with either ethanol or methanol fuel both of the fuels are stored in a common tank meaning here you can store both and still the engine will perform properly okay there is no problem in the mixing okay so dual fuel vehicle or flex fuel vehicle means internal combustion engine is designed to operate on more than one fuel even when it is stored in the same tank okay but bi fuel is the one where it is stored in separate tank it is simply like your reserve and main tank where you just take from which one you want to take okay so this guidelines has been issued for these vehicles flex fuel vehicles uh, in under this uh, hybrid electric vehicles so that is why uh, this is in news okay so as i told many many new hybrid technologies are going to come and you have to know that india is going to phase out the uh, petroleum imports and all and so that our deficit also reduces question number 20 which of the following are true about un counter terrorism committee it is a subsidiary body of united nations security council it is a 15 member committee established in 2013 after the indian parliament attack so its origin and what kind of body it is that is the two statements asked so here if you see un counter terrorism committee it is a subsidiary body of united nations security council so statement 1 is correct but the statement 2 is not correct because it is not established after the indian parliament attack in 2013 it was established much before in 2001 after the 911 attack in usa okay under this particular uh, resolution so this question is about un counter terrorism committee but there is another body called un uh, counter terrorism center okay which was established later in 2011 okay so don't confuse the things and one more thing is there counter terrorism trust fund which is established to support the implementation of this global counter terrorism strategy so many things of similar names i have just mentioned as extra information okay now why we are discussing this committee which i put the question is because in january india will chair the unsc counter terrorism committee okay and this is happening after 10 long years after 2012 so that is the reason this is very important news and maybe upsc can pick up and ask so it's a subsidiary body of unsc and it's a 15 member committee which india will chair now okay established in 2001 after the 911 attacks question number 21 
which are the following are true about Tan Sen. So about Tan Sen in your history books and all, a lot of information will be there in medieval history. So he spent most of his adult life till the age of 60 in the court and patronage of King Akbar. He was a prominent figure of Hindustani classical music. So his life and his uh, contributions, both questions, uh, both statements are formed. And this again, this is a current affair magazine and still we are asking you a static question because Tan Sen related something will be there in the news. So here if you see 97th edition of the World Sangeet Tansen Festival in Gwalior, Madhya Pradesh is happening. Okay, so it's a very old event, 97th edition and it is happening in this uh, uh, theme of Siddhanatha Temple which is situated in Omkareshwar. About Omkareshwar also UPC have asked a question in 2017 or 18 prelims I think. So it's a music festival which is uh, taking part uh, by India and people from abroad. So here if you see Hindustani classical music everybody will know second one is true. Okay, but the first one which maybe you thought it is true is false actually because Akbar actually met him only at the age of uh, 60. Okay, this person was actually in the court and patronage of King of uh, Reva that is uh, Raja Ramchandra Singh. And so Akbar then noticed him at that in age 1562 in the year 1562 and that time he was 60 years old. Okay, so up till the age 60 he was there somewhere else and he was given the uh, title this Mia which means learned man by uh, Akbar. Okay. So this is the basic information. More information in the uh, static medieval test you will get. Which of the following are true about tigers in India? National Tiger Conservation Authority was established in 2014. Project Tiger was launched in the 1970s. Bengal Tiger is found in India, Nepal, Bhutan and Bangladesh. Tiger is categorized as near threatened under IUCN status. So here again static and current affair both is there. And uh, this is a very easy question for people who have been studying uh, since last few months at least. Okay, if you are a beginner, maybe you will find it difficult, but for others, this is a very, very easy question. Okay, the first thing is IUCN status of tiger and elephant and all these things you are supposed to be knowing. Okay, they are all uh, endangered. They are mostly in endangered or vulnerable category, not in critical endangered also, not in near threatened also. So, they are uh, endangered. Okay, so fourth one you can eliminate. When you eliminate fourth one, you are then stuck with two, three and two, meaning only the third statement you have to read. Remaining one and other things you don't even have to uh, read. So third one, if you see, uh, Bengal Bang Tiger is found in India, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh. So this with little common sense and all, you will know that in the surrounding areas also, it is available. Okay, so answer is uh, two, three only. But these years, uh, which we mentioned, okay, both are wrong. National Tiger Conservation Authority was uh, uh, established, uh, sorry, second statement is true. It is by default true by your elimination. So NTCA was established in December 2005, okay, meaning not recently, it is there since uh, many years now. And Project Tiger was in April 1973, okay. And here, you know, you should know Wildlife Protection Act also was there 1972 and all, after that only this came. Then Bengal Tiger, in uh, these uh, countries are there, the number of tigers are also mentioned here. And tiger is endangered as per IUCN, okay. So basic IUCN status of the most important few animals you have to know, okay. So now some uh, deaths have been reported. Usually we hear like tiger numbers are going up, going up. But now uh, 126 tiger death has been reported recently. That is why it is a very important news. Okay. And it is found in uh, Madhya Pradesh. Most of the deaths are found in Madhya Pradesh. Which of the following are true about electoral bonds? These bonds are issued in multiples of 1000, 10,000, 1 lakh, 10 lakh, 1 crore without any maximum limit. SBI is the only authorized bank to issue these bonds. From the date of issuance, the bonds are valid for 45 days. A citizen can buy bonds either singly or jointly with other individuals. The recipient party should be secured at least 2% should have secured at least 2% of the votes polled in last held elections. So this if you see electoral bonds is asked multiple times. UPSC also asked in mains and prelims already. And this year it's important because in five states uh, elections happened and it was all many controversies also. So electoral bonds, which is a static part, a polity part, you have to know. Okay, in your Lakshmikan textbook also it will be given and you have to know the entire system that I cannot explain now, it will take time. But it's a very uh, efficient method so that uh, it will be, uh, black money will be not involved. Okay, because else in a uh, lot of bags and bags of money used to be given to parties. Now that will not go, now only through the banks it, it can go. Okay, so this static part of this particular thing you have to know and here answer it's very easy if you have studied the basics so first thing you have to know the last statement is definitely false because it is not two percentage it is one percentage okay one percentage or less minimum two percentage is not required minimum one percentage is required so fifth statement you can eliminate so this b and d will go away now we are one two four and two three four meaning two and four becomes automatically correct now you have to choose between statement one and statement three okay 
So statement three is from the date of issuance, the bonds are valid for 45 days. It is not valid for that many days and all. It's all a very, a very short, short, quick, quick kind of process. Okay. So I'll explain you the basics now. Electoral bond is a financial instrument used to make donations to political parties. And these bonds are issued in multiples of all these things. Okay. Without any maximum limit. Only SBI is authorized. Okay. SBI and its subsidiaries. From there only you can get it, uh, get, get these bonds issued. So from the date of insurance, only for 15 days it is there. Okay. Meaning there will be a, a window. For example, here current affair, if you see, central government has issued the 19th tranche of electoral bonds for December 31. So what they do is, like if you see March 1 to 10, September 1 to 10, like that it will be open. Okay. 1 to 10 only meaning 10 days in a month only it will be open that time if like suppose i want to buy i will go and buy the uh, bond okay i'll go and give 1000 rupees i'll get a bond okay 1000 rupee worth bond which will have no name nothing will be there i'll just get a bond that this can be given to a political party but that is valid for only 15 days that is the statement okay 10 days it will be open and then for 15 days it will be valid so you buy it or even on the 10th day march 10th you bought till march 25 it will be valid okay so they can be redeemed in designated account of a registered political party. Okay, donor name is not mentioned. So you take this, if you have a particular party, that party member, you go and give this. Okay, so they will then go to the bank and they can redeem it into their registered account. Okay, so everything is in a banking legal way. There is a legal uh, document for that now. It's not like a party can get whatever they want. So any person who is a citizen of India or a body incorporated or established in India, can purchase these bonds for a period of 10 days each in the month of January, April, July and uh, October. Okay. So persons can buy bonds either singly or jointly with other individuals. Now party registered under the Representation of People Act 1951 are entitled to receive donations through electoral bonds. Furthermore, these parties should have not should not have secured less than one percentage of the votes polled in last held elections. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, electoral bond related basic details. Question number 24. Which of the following are true with respect to Formula 1 F1 racing? So last year, UPSC started asking about sports and awards, especially about F1 racing also one statement was there. That is why this we have included. Okay, so every kind of news item you don't have to study, but something unique happened, then you have to make a note of it. So this uh, uh, F1 Formula 1 uh, World Championship was earlier known as World Drivers Championship till 1980s. So it's a static thing about that. Now, Lewis Hamilton recently became the first F1 driver to receive knighthood. So, this is the current affair part. So, one static, one current affair. This is exactly how last year's 2021 question, which even now uh, coaching institutes are like wondering, like, should we um, teach students now all of, of all the current affair of sports uh, has come. Similar type of question came. Okay. So, here it is one only. Okay. So, this if you see, uh, he has got the knighthood. That is the current affair. But he became the first one is wrong. It's actually, I think he's the fourth one to get. But one unique thing is he is only one to receive still while racing. Meaning others and all after their retirement, maybe they got it. But uh, uh, these people, uh, he, this uh, sorry, this Lewis Hamilton, he got it even when he is racing. That time he got the knighthood. Okay. So that is why it is news. Remaining all the basics, which I think can be picked up as a statement in both SSC, SSC and UPSC uh, exams. I have listed here. More than this, uh, please don't study. Okay. Because it's a waste of time studying a lot of sports things when you are preparing for UPSC okay so whatever which can be like uh, uh, picked up I have uh, put it here so make a note of this okay starting from here make a note of this last question which of the following are true about world malaria report 2021 it is released by the World Health Organization. India is responsible for less than 25 percentage cases in WHO Southeast Asia region Sri Lanka was certified malaria free in the year 2016 and it remains malaria free even till date okay so one only two only one three only one two three so here this any like world malaria or world tuberculosis world whatever report all these health related will come from health organization only so first one is true okay so only you can eliminate b now you need to know three and two so here if you see last one sri lanka was certified in 2016 this is a current affair that time also i taught you it is true only and it remains malaria free that is also true okay even though there have a lot of other crises sri lanka malaria it is free only so one and three is definitely true Okay, but the second one is the one where you need data. Okay, so here if you see India is responsible for 83 percentage of cases in the Southeast Asia region. Okay, so that is why India has to uh, take lot of more measures on this and that is why second statement is false and answer is 1-3 only. So basic information about uh, African countries and where uh, there are high cases of uh, this malaria that is mentioned here.
so comment your score so that you can know whether you are improving or not and if you need any more uh, foundational videos any lectures or anything first go and check the playlist section or if you are not in our whatsapp whatsapp me because if in whatsapp if you are there daily you will come to know what all videos are being uploaded okay and these packs okay exam is nearing and many people after the exam they regret that sir i should have bought that pack i thought it multiple times then i dropped it because i already are enrolled to another coaching institute all these uh, excuses okay after the exam when you tell you are already lost okay one more year you will lose and then after that there is no point crying or telling the same thing so see to it that you are uh, when you see something which is worth it then enroll it either enroll it or not enroll it don't do anything half-heartedly okay that yes or no decision if you cannot make it now then after becoming an IAS it will be more tough for you okay so see to it that for free test you email us or for enrollment choose the pack and whatsapp us so this is the end of this video subscribe to this channel thank you and have a nice day